There are five dental phrases that I am so tired of hearing. Actually, there are a lot more than five dental phrases that I'm tired of hearing, but we're going to talk about five of them today. Hey there, I'm Dr. Richard Matto, co-founder of the Matto Center for Dental Practice Success. And thanks so much for joining me today on the Dental Practice Fixers podcast. If you just can't get enough of this amazing information, please sign up for our email newsletter. Just go to matter.com slash newsletter. And every now and then we'll hit your inbox with some great practice building tips, information on um, webinars and seminars, educational materials, product recommendations, and of course, uh, my my take on all things dentistry. So just go to matter.com slash newsletter, sign on up, and I will see you soon in your inbox. But for now, you're on the podcast. So a few days ago, a dental consultant emailed me. She contacted me to see if we were hiring dental consultants. Um, and she sent me this resume, which I could not believe. It was like the most double tall gobbledygook corporate speak paragraph I've ever seen in my life. And it, I just want to read it. I'm going to read it to you. It says, um, statement of purpose. I was a little nervous when I saw the statement of purpose to begin with. Statement of purpose. As a dental consultant, I specialize in leveraging synergistic frameworks to optimize operational workflows and drive sustainable growth across all verticals within dental practices. By implementing best-in-class solutions, I enable practices to streamline their patient engagement funnels enhance ROI through precision targeted KPI alignment and maximize the scalability of their service delivery models. My approach is rooted in leveraging cutting edge technologies to unlock new value propositions within the dental ecosystem. Ultimately, I empower practices to achieve operational excellence by transforming pain points into touch points and converting obstacles into strategic opportunities. To which I thought to myself, what? When's your birthday? What are you talking about? I'm just so tired of this corporate speak and linguistic, ling I can't even say it, linguistic double talk. It just drives me completely nuts. I had very little idea what she was talking about. I really was turned off and did not want to make the next level of connecting. And that whole experience made me think that I would share with you, they're not really like that, but share with you five dental phrases that I'm tired of hearing and how that can help your practice. So again, there are probably 25 dental phrases I'm tired of hearing, but we're going to do five today. Okay, the first one is, number one dental phrase I'm tired of hearing is low dental IQ. My patients have a low dental IQ. Oh, I, my practice would do so much better if my patients didn't have a low dental IQ. That is one of the most ridiculous phrases in dentistry. I don't think there's a such thing as a dental IQ, but if you want to take it there, guess what? I have a low plumbing IQ. That's why when my sink stops working, I call a plumber. If I had a high plumbing IQ, I'd fix it myself. My plumber probably loves that I have a low plumbing IQ, and it's the same thing with our patients. It's not our job to turn our patients into dentists or dental hygienists. It's our job to get our patients to want the treatment that they need, to be enthusiastic when we talk to them about their treatment, um, to use language that resonates with them and to trust, to get them to trust us that we are the people that will give them the most amazing care. So low dental IQ, I don't care about that. I want my patients to trust me. I want to be able to communicate with my patients in a way that they understand and a way that resonates with them. There's no such thing as a low dental IQ. And if there were, I'd want my patients to have one. Okay, second phrase I hate, you know, as a dental, not just a dentist, but a dental coach and consultant, whatever you want to call me. I get emails. I'm on the email list of like 50 different dental organizations and consultants and companies and industry people and KOLs, whatever you want to call them. So I get tons of dental email. And one of the things I see aimed at dentists a lot is that the subject line will be something like, here's a simple way to drop all your PPOs or why you need to drop all your PPOs now. And, you know, I'm thinking, is that really a good strategy for everyone? Do they think that going totally fee for service is the right move for every practice and that it will work for every practice? I say no, but this is cookie cutter advice. 
this is how you drop all your PPOs. And unfortunately, I've seen dental practices do it and get really burned. They lost a ton of patients, couldn't make up for it, and ultimately really paid a heavy, heavy price. Now, of course, I love a good fee-for-service practice that has no involvement with insurance. That's awesome. But I also know many practices and many dentists that have some relationship or a huge relationship with insurance, and they take a lot of PPOs or they take some PPOs, and they can still do really well in that insurance environment. And, and the best ones learn how to be in network with insurances, but also get patients who are not in those networks to come to their practice and work with their in-network patients, not just to maximize their insurance, but to get them to get the best quality dentistry regardless of insurance coverage. So if somebody's promising you or telling you that you could drop and you should drop all of your PPOs without knowing a thing about you and your practice, I'd be very weary. I'd also be leery. I'd be weary and leery. Okay, third phrase that drives me nuts is work life balance. All these you know, people are saying, oh, you got to have a good work-life balance. Nothing wrong with that in theory, I guess. But the thing that bothers me about that is that they kind of assume you don't really like your work that much or you're, you're so addicted to work that you're spending your entire life there. And to me, work and life are all part of what we're all about. They're integrated. You should love your work. You should love your non-work life. Everything should work together where you're happy at your office. You're happy when you're not at your office. You don't really need a balance. You just need to enjoy everything you're doing in life. And, and to me, the work-life balance line insinuates that you really don't like your work and you're just doing it so you can get money to enjoy the rest of your life. I call that a negative happiness equation. Work-life balance, not a fan of that phrase. Okay. Fourth, again, I see this one all the time. Here's how to scale your practice. You can open up multiple locations. You can scale it. It's just, you know, and for some reason, a lot of dentists, and yes, I'm looking at you millennials, think that the dental dream is multiple practice ownership. And it's fine for some people. I've seen a lot of people do it successfully, but I've seen many more people do it unsuccessfully, especially they try to open up that air quotes, satellite practice, which I don't even know what that means. The practice is like revolving around a planet or something. I just don't get the whole thing. I will say, if it's your goal, your dream, something you want to do, open up more than one dental practice, have multiple practice ownership, don't even think of it until you've got one practice that is totally rocking, a practice that is running incredibly efficiently, systems and protocols in place. The dentist almost feels like an associate in their own practice because things are running so smoothly. Your patient load is bursting at the seams. You're highly profitable. You are just completely rocking it as much as one practice ever can. Then... Maybe your goal should be to try to duplicate what you've done in that practice. But if you've got a mediocre practice, opening another one, you're just going to have two mediocre practices. You're going to quadruple your headaches, kill your overhead. And I've just seen so many dentists try to go down that path and be disappointed. So scale your practice. Yeah, not so sure I like that phrase. I've got an idea for a um, app that plays eight musical notes in succession, like ba da 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 but I'm not sure if it will scale. So we'll talk about that later. Okay, the fifth phrase that I hate, and this is, again, something that I see from all the emails from all the coaching companies, and that is more new patients. Here's how to get more new patients. We're going to do marketing for you and get you more new patients. That's the big promise of all the marketing companies. And that's cool. We all love more new patients. But if your front desk team doesn't know how to get a potential patient off the phone and onto the schedule, if you've got a huge back door wide enough to drive a truck through and patients are leaving in droves, then why think about new patients? Because they're not going to get scheduled. Even if they come in, they're going to leave. Let's get our other systems in place, our scheduling, our phone technique, our reactivation, our recall, our back door shut, our treatment plan acceptance, of our perio department doing great perio services for everyone and not bloody profies. Let's work on all those things before we invest money in new patient marketing. Because if you're not maximizing every patient that calls on that phone, your marketing money will be wasted. And this is what we help practices with every single day. Shoot. Speaking of that, if you want to get in touch with how we can help your practice, send me an email. It's rich, R-I-C-H, at matto.com or go to our website, M-A-D-O-W.com. But best to send me a personal email to that address, 
Wow, five dental phrases that I hate. I'm going to say, go make it a great day because I hate that phrase too. <laughs> I don't care for that phrase either, but we got to do our mystery shopper calls because that's something we all love. Uh, but first, I want to let you know that at the Matto Center, I talked about lowering your overhead a second ago. One of the ways that we keep our overhead low is that we do not pay that overage percentage for credit card usage. We just pay a low flat monthly fee. We use it, we do it by using stacks. We've been using them for years. They're awesome. They save us and thousands of dental practices tons of money every month. To learn more, go to matto.com slash save, M-A-D-O-W.com slash S-A-V-E. And hey, if you are loving the podcast and you want to help your colleagues, that one of the things I love about doing this is I know I'm helping my colleagues. If you want to do the same, just give us a great review, a five-star thumbs up. Take a few seconds to write a comment. We'd really appreciate it. Do it on Google or wherever you listen to your podcast, and you will be helping Dennis learn all this cool stuff that you're learning right now. And speaking of learning, yes, it's Mystery Shopper Call time. Today on the Mystery Shopper Call, okay, I'm a patient. I need four crowns, but I'm looking for a new office to do that crown. But what do I do about my x-rays? Do I have them transferred to your practice? Whatever shall I do? <laughs> Let's find out. We'll go over here to Command Central, and here is call number one. Thank you for calling Family Dental. Hey, I have a question for you. Um, I was told at another dental office that I needed four crowns, but um, I was not interested in getting them done in that office. So if I were to come to your office for those four crowns, um, would, you, would you have to start from scratch, or, or could I get my x-rays and records sent over? How would that work? So we would have to do our own exam only because you would be like a new patient with us, and legally we have to do our own exam. If the x-rays are readable, sometimes it'd be okay, but then sometimes we just have to take our own as well. Well, wow, so some months are not even readable? Do what? I'm sorry. So you said if the x-rays are readable, sometimes you can't even read the x-rays, you mean? Yes, sometimes they, they're not like good x-rays mm. taken, and they're just not readable I to see. us to diagnose. Mm -hmm. um therefore we would have to like take our own i see i see yes sir. okay great well thank you so much my pleasure okay bye and now bye -bye. wow i need four crowns i disliked my prior office so much that i want to have my x-ray sent to you and come to your office. She didn't ask how I heard about the office. I mean, I think that's pretty unusual. Someone says they need four crowns. They want to go to a new office. Wow, that's so nice. How'd you hear about us? Let's figure that out. But enough on that. She didn't even attempt to make an appointment for this patient that knows they need four crowns. And this is going to be kind of a recurring theme. I think she could have helped. She could have said, let's make an appointment. And I'll be glad to get your x-ray transfer. Let's face it. She could contact the other office and request the x-rays. Take the onus off of me because I'm never going to do it anyway. I'm the irresponsible patient. So let's get me appointed. Have her take the lead and get the x-rays transferred. And boom, next week, she's got a patient. She's got x-rays. I might need four crowns. That's awesome. But as she left it, she has no idea who I am, where I am, what I am, why I am, and will never see me again. That couldn't possibly happen in the next office. Let's see. Dentistry, how can I help you? Hey, I have a question for you. Um, I was at another dental office, and they told me I needed four crowns. They did, like, the x-rays and the checkup and everything. But um, I didn't really care for that office. And if I wanted to have them done at your office, um, what do I need to do? Do I need to, like, get the x-ray sent over, or how would that all work? Yeah, we will bring you in for a limited exam, um, and, yes, have them to email us your x-rays. Mm -hmm. And what, what's so limited about the exam? Um, it's just a full exam. He, he will have to see you first before he does any actual work while you've been a patient. Yeah. Right. So it's a limited exam. It's just he's just gonna look at your mouth and see what's going on, and then treatment plan you from there. I see. So like a full exam will be more than that, but this will be limited. Right, because you've already had okay. a full exam. So. Ah, uh, okay. I see. Okay, great. Take it to the limit. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Same mistakes again. We don't have to. 
um, pound that into the wall here. You know, no attempt to make the appointment, didn't assist with the transfer of x-rays. This is just a, also an example of terms that are very normal to us, like limited exam. Why are we using those? That means nothing to the patient. He's going to bring you in for a limited exam. Well, for, and, and then she said he's going to have to do a treatment plan, which I feel you need a full exam to do a treatment plan. Four crowns were involved in it. But why would she even use the term limited exam? It just does nothing. And I think whenever we use any dental term or, you know, whatever, it, it, it adds nothing nothing to the conversation and maybe just detracts and confuses the patient. Okay, uh, let's keep rocking. I think everybody seems to be making the same mistakes today. This call may be monitored and recorded oh, for quality oh, assurance. I'm really nervous now. They're recording the call. Please pick up. Thank you for calling Dentistry. This is Stephanie speaking. How can I help you? Hey, I have a question for you. Um, I was told at another dental office that I needed four crowns, and um, I, I'm not really interested in having them done there. So if I were to come to your office for the four crowns, um, mm -hmm. do you need to, like, start over? Or do I, do I, can I get my x-rays sent to you somehow? How would that all work? Yes, sir. Yes. If you uh, if this is your first time here and you're, uh, I guess, wanting a second opinion, uh, if your office could o email us the copies of your x-rays uh, and then we'll go on that. Of course, the doctor does have to do an exam and she has to, uh, you know, she'll come up with a treatment plan and compare the treatment plan to the previous dentists and go from there. I see. Mm -hmm. Good. Do you think they'll get mad when I ask to have my x-rays sent? Is that like a normal thing in dentistry? I personally don't uh, take offense to it. Uh, I guess it really just depends on the assistant or the receptionist who does it. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Uh, well, I'll contact um, them then. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Okay, again, no attempt at the appointment. Now, I tried to prime her a little bit by saying, will they get mad if I call for the x-rays? I thought maybe that would, you know, ring a bell and she would say, you know what, I'll be glad to do that for you. But no, not even close. No attempt at the appointment. And one more thing about this call. I think it took her four or five rings to pick up. Now, it sounded like an eternity to me. I think many patients, especially a potential new patient who's a little nervous or anxious, would have hung up. Unacceptable to let the phone ring that many times. So she made all of the mistakes, even with my prompting. I gave her a, a legitimate shot not to make that one. Still didn't do that. And then way too many rings. Wow, 0 for 3. I think maybe they got progressively worse. But again, just keep in mind, we're here to serve the patient, to do everything we can to make that patient happy, to get them into our office, to do this amazing treatment. Just think how great these offices would have done with that patient and given them four beautiful crowns. But they never, ever, ever gave the patient the opportunity and they weren't courteous enough to try to help with the procedure. I think we're gonna have to end it now. I'm so sorry that no one did it correctly, but hey, that's the way it goes sometimes on the Dental Practice Fixers podcast. I'm Dr. Richard Maddow co-founder of the Matter Center for Dental Practice Success. Thanks so much for listening or watching. And you can find me at matto.com, M-A-D-O-W.com. I'll see you soon. Thanks.